quick dev tip. So this is one of those slightly more obscure tips that I don't see many people talking about. But basically, you can do advanced searching in the content browser using operator logic and some special syntax. So I'm sure you know that you can search for specific things. So here I want to look for my voices. So all the voices or things that are named voice in my project. We can do uh, not voice. So that's exclamation mark and then the word you want to look for. So now it's showing me every single thing in my project that isn't a voice. Next up would be I want to look for voice and player. So that's going to show me anything that's a voice that's a player. We can also do a or. So I could do player and then vertical line, which is the next to the left shift and zomb. So that's going to be anything that's called zomb and anything that's called player. We can, we can get a slightly more complicated version, which would be I want to find anything that's hit and that it and is not player. So that we get stuff that isn't voices in this. The interesting one we can do here is we can do pre and post as well. So here I'm going to look for anything called hit, as you can see. So that's literally just showing me anything that's beginning with a hit. So that is the word, whatever the number you want to do, and then three dots after it. Tied to that, we can do anything that's post in the naming. So if I do three dots and then I do, let's say, one, and that's going to show me anything that ends with a one. And I could do two, three. And I get more specific, I could do three dots and then a two with a zero two. So they're the kind of more generic ones. We can actually go more advanced as well. So if I hover over a static mesh, we can see a bunch of information. And if you look at the beginning bits, so vertices, materials, triangles, UVs, so these are actually all metadata information that we can search in here. So an example of this, we can search for triangles less than 10. So an entire project, we've got two static meshes that are less than 10 triangles. So we could bump that up to 100, 500, 5,000, and as you can see, we can start to get more. So we can do it by type as well, so we can look specifically for static meshes. And as you can see here, it's kind of auto-filling in a list of things we can search for predictively. So we can do static mesh, and now that's showing all the static meshes in the project. I can change this to scale mesh, and now we can see all the skeletal mesh. These are a bit more general. I, I think you'd have to have a specific purpose to be looking for these. But I want to give you a couple of examples now that I think are actually quite useful. One, we could look for, so we can look for collision params, which is basically, does it have collision? And if we do less than or equal to zero, so that in this example, we're looking for anything in our project that doesn't have collision. Yeah, so this, this could help us catch a wall that's meant to have collision that doesn't. So another one, which is more of an optimizing one, would be checking for UV channels. Opposite to what we just did, we can do greater than one. So here we can see anything that's got more than one UV channel. Extra UV channels take up a, a little bit more memory. So uh, if we were trying to optimize a project, we'd ditch them. So one, one and two is probably fine because that would be normal and maybe a light map channel. But as you can see here, these guys have got more than two. So depending on whether you actually needed those, a way to optimize or to find what you could optimize very quickly across your whole project would be to use some of these advanced searching commands. So I think this stuff is super powerful. I think you just need to find a, a purpose for it.